I love Star Wars, so much so that for one birthday, my mum made me a Darth Vader cake that was brown. She used pre-made icing, and apparently the black colour in that brand was licorice flavoured, so a creative choice was made. Two years later, a book called Star Wars Incredible Cross Sections would be released and blow my mind with its detailed depictions of Star Wars vehicles. I tracked down one of the artists, Hans Jensen, to find out how he helped bring all those details from a galaxy far, far away a little closer. Started when I was a kid, just obsessed with the kind of detailed drawings and cutaways. I just love seeing the inner workings of stuff. I don't, I don't know, it's just the way my head's wired, I guess. Well, there was one called Eagle, one called Look and Learn that I used to love. Every week they had some sort of cutaway of a machine that was really cool, like a boat or a plane or a vehicle of some sort. That's how my interest started. I lived very much hand to mouth for a few years until I got an agent, which was a turning point. I started getting better work and more work and better paid work through the agent. The connection with Dorling Kindersley happened and I illustrated several books for them in a series called Look Inside Cross Sections. That work was then seen at a European book fair by Lucasfilm who were looking for a publisher to work with to do the kind of cutaways of Star Wars vehicles that I ended up doing. I was asked to do a cutaway for the Millennium Falcon and I had about nine days to do it in and that was crazy hours and I had no reference and I just sort of threw it together out of my head. Vehicles, a, a, an average one would maybe be about 250 hours. The Millennium Falcon was a real head scratcher because a lot of the film sets they built kind of didn't fit in the shape of the ship. There was a lot of working out and disguising to do on that. Yeah, well, Lucasfilm liked it enough for, for the project to go ahead, so it was soon obvious that there was far too much work for me on my own. So they brought on board another artist called Richard Chasemore, who's absolutely brilliant. And we worked together for the next 10 years on the Star Wars books. Our styles are very similar. It creates a project which really has a, a very good consistency of style all the way through. We divided up the work so it seemed like an equal workload as far as we could tell and uh, on we went. We're mostly working on that A2 size sheet of paper, which is big enough to get the detail in, but not too big that it would take too long, because the more paper you have to cover, the longer it takes. The process starts with whatever there is. Anything that is actually seen in the movies, we, we really had to work hard to get it absolutely right, because the fandom out there, it's, it's kind of intimidating. When the first book came out, nobody had sort of seen detail cutaways on the level that we were working at and questions kind of started coming from all over the place. Anything you don't see in the film, we, we got to make it up. There's no right or wrong. There's does it look good? Does it look cool? We worked hard to try and make sense of everything we, we were doing and kind of have specific systems which made things work. Like the, most of the ships can just float off the ground in midair. So we had anti-gravity generators and repulsor lifts and, and all this machinery and, and accelerate to beyond light speed. If you're accelerating that quick to that fast, you'd just be a big mush in the back of the cockpit, you know? But so you have to have some sort of generated molecular cohesion field so a piece of kit to create that and everything has is connected by cables to a power source and you know just try and think it through and we were working with an author called david west reynolds on the first book it was like a real sort of swashbuckling indiana jones type character he is an archaeologist by trade he was actually on a dig in tunisia he was also a big Star Wars fan and he knew that a lot of the Star Wars locations had been filmed in Tunisia. So he set about trying to find the locations which he, him and his friend, a guy called Mike Ryan, eventually located. And they were absolutely gobsmacked to actually find a whole bunch of stuff that was simply left behind and abandoned after the filming finished. This was somehow noticed by Lucasfilm and he ended up working there. 
He was like very much hands-on and it was a very collaborative process developing all the visuals. He had really good, clear ideas of what he wanted, which is great for us illustrators. If someone's telling me what to do, I'm very happy. Whereas like the vaguer the instructions, the more work it always turns out to be. You start sketching and it goes backwards and forwards in those days on a fax machine. I'd work all day, I'd run to the photocopy shop, Xerox everything, fax it over to California and then go to sleep and in the morning when I wake up there's like seven pages of fax sticking out in my machine and then once we've nailed down the pencil stage and you know exactly what you're doing, then it's inked with a, a rotary pen and painted with gouache, which is a water-based paint, but it's opaque. So you can use it to build up in layers and really get a rich texture, which is kind of useful for the Star Wars universe. Everything's filthy. So the prequels, we, we were asked if we would be prepared to uh, go and work in California for two weeks and um, work at Skywalk Garage. And uh, we had to think about that for one millisecond before, you know, saying, yes, please, wow. We were actually given keys to the art department at Skywalker Ranch, which was on the third floor. O only the people that worked in the art department specifically had keys. So we met all the concept artists. The guy in charge in those days was uh, a guy called Doug Chang, who's just brilliant artist, absolutely fantastic. His work was just really, really small little pictures, but so beautifully done and detailed. And uh, there was one day when, when we heard that George Lucas was gonna come up upstairs for a, a chat with his concept people, and we were getting more and more nervous about that happening, and, and we made ourselves scarce in the end. We did meet him subsequently um, on, a, on a subsequent visit. And he was very nice. All three prequels, we, we went and did a fortnight at Skywalker Ranch. So, yeah, we got quite familiar with the place and we were shown around the archives and saw all the film props from the original movies and the new movies. And there were like Adat Walkers and Eye Fighters and X Wings and the, the half built Death Star. And, and it was all up there. And Yoda, the actual Yoda puppet that they used. There were occasions we were even got special permission to take some photos, which was very cool because they didn't like people taking photos. We were put in the room, given a camera, that we took a bunch of photos, had to give the camera back, and then we got the photos sent to us when we were back in the UK. But Jensen isn't done with the galaxy far, far away just yet. I thought I'd retired from Star Wars, but I'm back to start another project which at this precise moment is kind of top secret but um i gotta be fair to the publishers they are investing in proper hand-drawn artwork still which when they absolutely there are cheaper options out there they're still doing it properly which is which is great I'm not a digital artist. When I work on the tablet, I'm still just drawing. So learn to draw. That's my first piece of advice and you'll never regret it. If you can draw, you'll be a better artist no matter what you're doing. I do what I do, I've got my niche and, uh, and I'm still getting work, so I can't complain. <laughs>